What's up guys, Justin here of Yugatech, and with over 100 smartphones that are being released every year, you'll be surprised to know that there are some that weren't able to make it into the market. Let's take a look at them and see what went wrong. First on our list is the Google Project Ara. It was a modular smartphone project developed by Google in 2013. It lets users start from a basic device and eventually build the handset up with specific parts that users want, be it a kick-ass camera, more battery capacity, a bigger memory, and many more. These parts will be like from a Google Play-like marketplace, but with hardware instead of software. It's pretty cool. However, in 2016, Google suspended Project Ara. According to a report by Reuters, Google has suspended Project Ara as part of the company's push to streamline its hardware efforts. Reuters also said that while Google will not be releasing the phone itself, the company may work with partners to bring Project Ara's technology to market, potentially through licensing agreements. Next up is the Nokia 7700. The Nokia 7700 was announced in 2003 but was never released. It featured a 3.5-inch touchscreen LCD. CD with a resolution of 640 by 320 pixels, which was the first smartphone to sport a 2 by 1 aspect ratio. It was expected to be the first phone running the Series 90 GUI on Symbian OS and Nokia's first pen-based device. Rumor has it that the phone didn't make it to the market because Nokia was refocusing on making normal-looking phones and they didn't want to take any financial risk. On the third spot, we got the BlackBerry Cult. It was supposed to be BlackBerry's first smartphone to be powered by the QNX software that also powered up the BlackBerry Playbook tablet. It was said that it resembled the Torch 9860 but without the hardware keys and said to be thinner than the Vold 9900 and with the same stainless steel unibody. Until today, the reason for cancellation is unknown. Fourth on this list is the Emblaze First Else. Emblaze was an Israeli company and the First Else was supposed to revolutionize the mobile phone market. It was running on a Linux-based Else Intuition operating system and a one-thumbed interface that promoted a semi-circle options wheel for navigating the UI. The First Else was cancelled due to critical delays. Up next, we have the Nokia 600. In 2011, the brand announced the Nokia 600 along the 701 and 700, but unfortunately, it didn't make it. It came with an internal radio antenna and ran on Symbian Bell OS. A day before its official launch, Nokia pulled the plug off for an unknown or simply unannounced reason. And on the sixth spot, we have the LG GW990. The LG GW990 was a mobile internet device powered by Intel's Morristown platform and the new MeGo OS. Think of a bigger iPod Touch that can connect to 3G and do 3D games plus lets you view 720p PhD movies. To simply put, software issues led to its cancellation. Next up, we got the HP Pre 3, which was the successor to the Palm Pre 2 just before Hewlett Packard acquired Palm. It was powered with a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, Adobe Flash 10.1, and can do Wi Fi tethering. Most interesting was that the phone supports dual mode, HSDPA and EVDO chips on board. However, on August 18, 2011, which was the next day of its release, HP announced that it will be abandoning operations of all WebOS-related products, which included the HP Pre, HP Veer, and the HP Touchpad. So, there's that. And there you go, guys. Which of these phones do you think should have been released? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this video informative, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Justin, and don't forget to wash your hands and stay at home.